Okay, this is the white-tailed deer. We had ten. We have ten pounds. So, with the snack stick and pepperoni, we do about thirty percent additives to it. So, with pork and a little bit of beef and stuff like that. So, we should come out probably around that thirteen point, which I've already measured out. So, thirteen. So that's your mix for the uh, snack stick. Basically, it's the same for the pepperoni. Um, that one was 14 pounds, I believe. I've already kind of pre-measured this because I didn't want to keep recalibrating my scale. So um, that was 13 with 30%. This should be close to the 17 or yeah, 15 because it was 11 or 12, 12 pounds or 11 and a half. So that's 30% of the pork and a little bit of beef in with the antelope pepperoni. So these two are ready to mix. So we'll grind them up initially, um, do one grind, and then we'll probably mm, maybe add our seasoning and then do the second grind. We're gonna start grinding up these, this meat. This is uh, white-tailed deer for snack steak. See, so I'm just mixing the pork, a little bit of the beef, and the white tail. In with it as we go. This is pork. This is white tailed deer. See the how lean it is? You see how pork always has fat through it and all that type of good stuff. Where the deer, you don't see hardly any marbling at all. So that's where the leanness comes from. And uh, that's the difference. That's why wild game tends to be a little drier, obviously, because you don't have the fat content like you do on pork and beef and domesticated animals. And that's why we add it. <laughs> There's our initial grind for this deer snack stick. Okay, we're gonna go over to the antelope pepperoni. I gotta wipe out this, the auger and stuff real quick so we don't intermingle the meat. Okay, we're over to the uh, antelope pepperoni. Same grind. Diameter hole, 3 sixteenths. That's what we're gonna do. It's just these small ones that... See, it should be... I, if I'm on that manual press, I can pump these things out. I just feel for, feel the pain for the next three days from having to, but at this rate, That's ridiculous. We gotta be able to do more than that. That's that's freaking ridiculous. Okay, now we're over on the manual where I'm gonna do it and shell will feed it. And we can probably do this a lot easier now that we add a little more water, but you'll see how that thing was just so slow. This is how we should be coming out of these things. It's just more work on me, but we put a whole sleeve on this thing. And if that electric one could do it like this, it'd be my hero. So right now it's my zero. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. to mentally prepare ourselves every time we do this that it's going to take a little bit longer a little bit more work but that's okay as long as you can mentally prepare yourself you know that you know it's going to suck you just uh roll with it see that was a whole casing we knocked out right there where it wasn't with that other guy, so this is just a snack stick. We still got pepperoni to do, but we'll get it. Tomorrow we will get out here, we'll smoke, we'll make some more. So different sizes, which goes a lot easier. So we're finished with the uh, snack stick, the deer snack stick. We're going to put them on a tray. Those go into the cooler for overnight. Okay, we're pressing out pepperoni now. I only filled the can about halfway. See if that makes it a little easier on us, which it is, maybe. The pepperoni's pressed out. We got it there. I, I didn't coil those in the lengthwise because it might go in the larger smoker so I can obviously run my my line longer. This is what always comes out of the can in the bottom of the collar, the neck, and we save that, give it back to our, to the person so they can utilize as much as we can out of this animal. Okay, we've moved on to the burger packaging of this series. This is the elk, and I gotta re re refresh you guys, this stuff had been in the freezer for I think a year and a half some of it two years since 19, three years. So we cleaned it up. It doesn't have that uh, freezer burn smell on it anymore. It's gonna be good. And uh, we recovered the meat. Sometimes people forget that it's in there and then you remember, but you can still utilize it for stuff. You just won't have as much cause you gotta trim off the, the bad stuff. So I'm gonna show you a deli wrap and then I'm gonna show you a butcher wrap on this real quick deli wrap I always bring it about a little bit closer to me than that so your your paper is a little bit longer on that side and you'll see why I bring we always double wrap everything so this longer side tucks up underneath crease it and then you crease it one more time straight down tuck in the sides to themselves so you get that nice little Christmas wrap and then tuck it to the bottom. Boom. So this tape is the thick stuff. So then it comes out like that. So you see, you see your double wrap. That's called a deli wrap. Just a little prettier, cleaner wrap. So that one. And then this one is where you go from corner to corner. I don't usually do this. We like the deli wrap just because it looks a little nicer. And then you roll the stuff over one and then bring these sides in to here, here, and then you finish it off in a roll. So it's like that, except we had a little bit too much paper. And that's how they tape it. Boom. All right, there you go. Take that to your mom because you got your steaks for dinner tonight. So that's the butcher wrap, which if I did a little nicer, would come out a little nicer, but we'll just leave it like that. You can tell the difference. We like deli wrap, just a nice, fresh, clean look. So this is elk, and this is probably about three quarters of a pound. And this little fella, so we'll have a little excess paper on this one. So. Boom. A lot of excess paper on this one. Oh well. And then Shelly will label. This is elk. So she'll label those elk burgers. And then we'll date it. 
which is December 28th, 29th, or whatever today is. It's Thursday. I don't ever know. This is in the not for sale. Boom. Boom. So there's your deli wrapped elk burger. This is about, what, about a pound and a half, Mom? Ah! About a pound and a half brick, which everybody kind of likes. Older family members and people, if it's just two of you. Hey, can you wrap those a little smaller in just one pounder? So yeah, then we'll wrap them in one pounders. It takes a little bit longer, a lot more paper, but obviously you don't have as much left over. Butcher wrap, deli wrap, elk burger, boom. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more between the meat cutting, the taxidermy tannery, the pumpkin growing, our gardens, our family and everything. We're like in between what everybody else has got out there. Appreciate you watching. See you later. All right, here's our white tail snack stick. Get the probes out. It's almost as fun as Christmas lights. It's uh, 43 degrees in here. I got the wood stove going. It's it's about 34 outside, and we're snowing though. But uh, it warms up in here to about 60 once we get everything up and running. Okay, so white tail snack stick. Now, remember we used the electric one for most of this, so it came out shorter, which is why I put them in the small smoker. But I did press out, I think one or two in the manual one so I could get this done today or yesterday. So, and that. You know, it's kind of weird. Um, our American breasts, every time they hear me get up in the morning or get out here to do the see them, as soon as they hear me walking and talking, boy, they start crowing. It could be dark midnight and they'll start crowing. All right. We will uh, get this going in the small smoker. I'll bring you over here in a second and show you the smokers and how this is going here. Now we're cooking. That's a ticket. All right, let me see here. It's a 0700. The small smoker cooks really quick. So 15 pounds in there will probably take about an hour and a half, two hours. And the bigger one could take about up to three, three and a half. So this is the small smoker, so they're just in there cooking away. And then the larger smoker over here. I don't like opening and closing too much because you let the heat out, obviously, but Yep, there you go. Well, all right. Gonna let those things smoke, monitor them, obviously, and then once they come out, we'll show you that. We'll hang them, let them cool, then they'll be wrapped, and then those two uh, sausage types will be done. Okay, we just pulled the blue probe, was at one, yeah, the 155 area, and, um, from the small smoker and it's 820 so they're starting to come finish off so this is the uh, snack stick we'll just let it cool now for a couple hours let it sit here for now oh, about 20 minutes and we'll move it over to a cooler spot but right now I'm just getting them out of the smoker so this was at 155 these other ones are reading now that I open the the door, they're about 135. So they were a little bit uh, behind this, which it won't take long, probably 20 minutes and they'll be there. So the pepperonis are still over in the large smoker. They're about a, still about an hour out, hour and a half. They're 136 to 130 range on those three probes. So we'll keep watching them. I got this meat cleaned up because we had, it was in Ziplocs and stuff and I had to trim some silver skin and just some unpleasantries off of it. I have deer 
summer sausage getting ready to go over here. This is going to be deer German, deer German, deer summer, and then the antelope German sausage. We are adding uh, into the, all of three of these uh, sausages, jalapenos and cheddar, and uh, maybe some, some pepper jack. I've got everything staged, the pork butt and the picnic shoulders all trimmed off, ready to go so I can add my quantities. I've got some beef fat here to add in, the jalapenos and the cheeses. So I'm gonna weigh them out, get all the meat distributed, then we'll take them to the grinder, do the initial grind, stuff like that like we've done, and uh, keep moving on. We're gonna sprinkle in just a little bit. We're gonna add a little pepper jack and the ch um, cheddar in with this and jalapenos to this German. <clears throat> And if you're a cheesy freak, which some people I know are, when you make your summer sausage and you either you put them on a nice toasted garlic toasted bun or something, you can add some more cheese to it, you know, to melt it when you get it done and get ready to eat it. And you got a really cheesy German sausage. <clears throat> yep. This is only, like I said, 10 pounds. Rule of thumb for cheese is for every 10 pounds of meat, oop, <laughs> is one pound of cheese. Um, that's just the rule of thumb. You can add more or less, whatever you want. It's your sausage. And then jalapenos, same way. Um, we use fresh jalapenos. We use canned jalapenos. These ones are the little canned slice ones, but that's also to your flavor. Um, you can add more jalapenos, some people, but it really doesn't add a whole lot of heat. It just has a good flavor to them. We also add habaneros, which those will be fresh to this, which some people like the habaneros. It just kicks it up one more notch. So if Shelly would bring that camera over here, this is kind of what it, that loaf looks like. So that's a German sausage meatball, which is an 11 pound meatball right there. Okay, this is the deer summer sausage. We had 17.5 pounds of that. Shelly mixed up the summer sausage seasoning packet to 16.1 ounces per pound for the uh, spices. It's obviously a different color. You can see it. There's mustard seed, garlic, other stuff in here. So see how it's a little darker, different seasonings. It's not as dusty. You don't sneeze. And it's, it, this, is, this, is our, this is our number one requested item from our our family and, and friends and everybody who enjoys this. This is the good stuff right here. Everything else is good, but this this took us a while. Shelly and I, we did the, we've been doing this for about 27 years. And um, when we first started this, oh my God, we used one of those little grinding machines. You know, you get for 50 bucks. We're trying to do this stuff and then mixing the spices. We I couldn't get the spices correct. And then we'd be stuffing it through a little stuffing tube and we'd have 40 pounds to do that. And that would take us like six hours. Shelly would have to work. She'd go to bed at three in the morning and have to get up at seven, six o'clock to go to work. It was horrendous. So 27 years later, probably about 25, we've almost perfected this recipe and how we do it. We're self-taught on everything. We've been homesteading for 31 years. Okay, we're gonna go over to the grinder. We got it cleaned up after doing the Germans. We're gonna grind this down to that texture. Then we'll add jalapenos and cheese and we'll show you all four of these things. You know, we make our summer and there's other commercial meat processors and butchers in town and all over the place. But I've never tasted their summer sausage and when they make it. And I, I've heard, you know, some, some's okay, blah, blah, blah. And, but I've never personally tasted another, another person's summer sausage. So now we'll throw the total weight on here. 
22. Total 22 pounds once everything's done here of this deer summer sausage with cheddar. I added some pepper jack in there too, but it doesn't add too much flavor. And jalapenos to this. So we have deer summer, two antelope, two antelope Germans, one deer German, and every one of these have jalapenos and cheese in them. This should be about 60 pounds of sausage right here today, plus the other 30, 40 we did yesterday. Oh, no, we did more than that because we did burger. About 125 pounds of meat we've done the last two days. Um, you know, we did some burger, and uh, most of it's this sausage right here. Just gonna do a little cleanup, get the tables cleaned up, the uh, grinder cleaned up in its little area. Shells over here doing the dishes on our three bay sink area. We just want to get all cleaned up and tidied up because it is kind of stormy outside. And if we lose power, we really get screwed. And I don't feel like plugging in our new generator. So we're just doing some cleanup right now around the shop. All right, we're going to stuff the deer summer sausage into the tray spade manual labor can. <laughs> But these, these things I can pump out real fast. Um, we're gonna get the summer sausage out of the way first, and then we're gonna do the Germans. See how that goes. Should go pretty well. It'll hold 13 pounds. I'm only gonna put about 10 in, or about seven or eight. Get that out the way. Press plate and your rubber seal down in there. Locks in the bottom. Little dog ear hooks, slide it, lock it down so now it's in place. We'll disconnect our additional lock we added, Derek Shelley's dad. We'll let the shaft go down. It's a two gear, which this is the uh, uh, high speed, so you can crank it down. And now this is the smaller gear, which you can really press them out with. So, and it'll, it'll go pretty fast. So, let me get my casing see this is what I was talking about when they uh, said they were st sticking a little bit when they were cutting the meat is I didn't let the water penetrate enough through the casing and down inside this so this was still a little dry so when I put it on there the meat came in there and stuck to it so but these have been soaking for about an hour and a half two hours so we should be good so you just slide it on these are 24 inch length inch and a half casings. We do have 18 inch, which are the maroons, which I hear we're not gonna be able to get anymore, which I don't care for the mahogany so much, but the 18 inches I liked. Uh, they do have 12 inch, but by the time you press it out and crimp the end, you're about nine. And you're like, boom, it just takes too long. So these are 24 inch length, and I will show you one. It's real easy to press out. Hey. You know, just press it out. I can do this by myself, which is so nice. Look at that. I'll probably make these about 20 inches long. Get them kind of tight. Back it off. And they come with vent holes poked all through there. So when you're cooking it, the pressure inside the, the casing, see, I don't know if you can see all the little bumps that releases the pressure so it doesn't explode. So we will line these out. What I'll do is I'll twist it. And we have our hog clamp over there, which I'll do all these at once. Twist it, then we'll hog clamp it. Shelly's grabbing the hog clamp, which we used to tie these and squeeze this kind of tight to really pack that. I normally have my towel here, there we go. I should have my glove on this hand because I'm not supposed to be doing this yet. Anyways, so you pack it kind of tight, hog clamp it, bam. We used to tie these with a string, that sucked. But now, this will hang overnight for eh, probably 19 hours in the cooler or in the 34 degrees. We'll have about 10 of these. Then tomorrow morning we will smoke. Smoke them and they will be done. But you can see the cheeses and the jalapenos and all that stuff in the clear casings that's why i like the clear because it just aesthetically looks a little cooler to me and it still turns red which you'll see which you can still see 
I'm gonna press out a mahogany, 18 inch. We'll kind of, obviously you know the difference, but uh, these 20, the 24 is good for if you're having like a get together, major get together party. Uh, my hand's all wet. Hold on. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, um, so let me press out this 18 here. So here's the 18. The only thing that's kind of inconvenient about these casings is all the vent holes. You do get the little bit of meat that comes out in the thing. So you're obviously getting the residual meat all over the casing, but we wipe them and clean them. So here's the 18, 24, six inches. We do leave a little bit of extra on the end just because I don't want it squeezing out or going, then we'll clean these off. So 18, 24, clear, mahogany, inch and a half casings, summer sausage. Obviously, the bigger the casing, the quicker you can go through these things, which is nice. So, I may make a couple of these 24s down to 18 because an 18 is good for a football party or just you and your sons or daughters or whatever, three or four of you, you can polish off one stick. Um, the 24s are if you're having a good get together. You have a couple of hungry horses coming over to eat. You can whip out one of these big sticks and uh, take it. You can also, you know, we'll freeze these afterwards. You can also just cut a chunk off, cap it, and then refreeze that and have, you know, whatever length you want. But 24s are, are good, give you room to play with. The uh, summers are getting ready to go into the cooler. There's the package of the leftover meat and we ended up with six summer sausages. So they're going in the cooler and then we're gonna start over here on the Germans on the electric press. Okay, we're gonna start pressing out these antelope German sausages. But first before we start that, this is the same situation we ran into with those 18 millimeters with the pepperoni and snack stick. If I use the same size tubing as the casing, it's a little, Oh, well, no, that one might work. See, I can't fit the whole thing on. Yeah. See, so you can't fit the whole thing on. Now, if I go down one size, obviously, it fits on there nice, and I can slide this whole stinking sleeve on there. I just got to monitor it a little bit more, make sure we fill up before we go too far out. So that's what we're looking for. So now, hopefully, I'm going to add a little bit of water to this meat so it's a little more easy to press out. Plus, instead of filling the whole tank full with this 14 pounds of meat, I'm only gonna put it in about half and see how the unit does pushing it out. I think, I think we'll be okay. So, I'm gonna add about eight ounces of water to that. There we go, see that's, that's not so gummy for us, which is what we want. Like I said, I'm only gonna go about half of this. Let's see how much. Ow, press it out. See how this goes first. All right, put that to the side. Slides, locks in place. on there let's see how this goes everybody if you see me have a hissy fit and a little temper tantrum and throw this thing through the wall you know it didn't go well but it will okay, i'm gonna be at uh, 80 percent oh, man i got a tickle on the variable speed drive of the motor capacity of the shaft so let's see what happens here everybody going to 80 see what happens I am not very happy with this. Here comes my temper tantrum. Why is it doing that, Shell? 
I don't know. I'm not real impressed yet. I am not real impressed either. It's like it's not pressing. It's like it just stops. Yeah, it's just like it stops, guys. I'm not real happy with this. This is pissing me off. It's oinking my pig. We should be pumping this stuff out. We switched to the bigger tube and we got about half of one of those sleeves on. Maybe a third half right through there. And it seems to be doing better. Let me get it going down here. It just does not like these small tubes. Plus we have cheese and stuff in here, but it should be like knocking these things out the park. And now it's gonna start pressing. actually does better at that 80% so it's not a constant you know we're not blowing these out of the park but it's a lot easier than me manually doing it I'm at like 70% and it seems to be operating right here where I think it likes to there we go if I take it down to 70% it doesn't give it that pulsing, you know, like 100%, uh, I can't do it, so it backs off. And then 100%, no. So if I'm staying at this 60, it's just a constant pressure, and we're starting to just slowly just keep feeding. I think from this size up, it, it does fine, but the little smaller sizes, you saw the, oh, <laughs> you saw the result. Wasn't quite doing it as well. But like right here, we're getting a constant flow which that's not on my shoulder, my back, my wrists. Okay, these are uh, German sausage size casings. I think they're 22s. Um, they're edible collagen. Um, there's collagen, natural, and fibrous. Fibrous are what the summer sausages are made out of. You don't eat that. Collagen you eat, I'm just gonna tell you what it's made out of. It's made out of the skin of the animals ground up into a powder and other things to make this casing. It's edible and it's also to where if you like, when you start cooking these, sometimes the, the casing comes away from the meat so you can kind of like peel it off like a Tootsie Roll wrapper. And uh, so you don't have the casing there to eat and then you just have strictly meat. But we're using edible collagens for most of our stuff. You know, there's the natural, which is hog casings and sheep casings to do this like this size right here would be a hog casing they tend to be a little more costly and little the uniformity isn't as you know it's not going to be uniform all the way through on the size but sometimes if you get a twist on them or an area where it has a thicker side of the natural casing, which is the intestines. Sometimes you can bite into a kind of a gummy, chewy piece of the casing and some people go, ooh, I don't like that. These, you can peel them off or you eat them and they're, they're, they're fine, more uniform. Pepperoni snack stick or edible collagen, summers are fibrous. Keep going. Okay, so start at the end right here. And when you're pressing these out, you want to leave a little bit of slack. There may be a little bit too much in some of this, but it, that's no big deal. You can squish it. But you want to be able to press the sausage kind of to the length you like. Eh, whatever that is, six, eight, seven inches. And then you make your pinch. And there's cheese and jalapenos in this too, so you got to watch it. And make sure your casings are a little fresher. The older they are, the more brittle they get. But anyway, so you make your pinch. You find your length of your sausage you want. Turn this one to you, see, so you get your crimp. So then the next one, same length, kind of squish it together to pack that meat in there just a little bit more. <laughs> and then the next one, you go away from you. So it's still keeping the tight end. See, we have a little bit of air in here. You're gonna get a little bit of air in these things because you have cheese and jalapenos and it is in a solid spot in there. So I have to kind of work it a little bit just to push some air around and get it. So then back to you, next one, kind of push it, feed a little more, 
away from you. Boom. 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 And they're going to untwist in spots and stuff, but the main thing is, is see, that's a, that's a big fella. So we may just leave him, squeeze him down a little bit, twist off the end, and then you have your, your sectional wiener schnitzels. Um, like that, we'll put them in the cooler and then overnight get them out and I will only lightly smoke these and I'll go over that in the morning because I don't fully cook Germans. We'll put those on the tray and we'll keep going. This is the antelope, eventually like that and they'll cure overnight and these are really good. Okay, everybody, we just got done pressing out all of the Germans. We're gonna put those in the cooler Get that wrapped up. It is 1220. I've been doing this for six and a half hours. No big deal, but it's that's how long this has been. But we've done a lot of meat today and a lot of stuff. We're getting ready to wrap the snack sticks and pepperoni. Shelly had to go take a, a break, but I'm gonna finish it up. We'll do this wrapping, get those wrapped up in the cooler and tidy up in here and we'll be done till tomorrow morning on day three, which will be smoking the summers and the Germans. And then we'll be done with this segment of meat. Good morning, everybody. This is day three of the antelope, deer, and a little bit of elk process, meat processing. I have the summer sausages in the big smoker, which is right over my uh, right shoulder. They're in there. They've been in there for about an hour and a half. They're gonna take about five hours but they're looking good. We just did a light smoke and cook on the ones that are hanging right here. Those are the deer German sausage. They're only about 25% cooked, like I've said in previous videos. Um, so you gotta finish cooking them, just whatever you do. Nuke them, put them in a skillet, bake them, whatever you do. The deer are done. We've got the antelope, the first tray set in the small smoker. It's getting ready to be pulled out and I will show you those. But uh, man, these are, these are looking really good. Great sausage for barbecues, breakfast, those midnight rendezvous to the kitchen, if you, <laughs> whatever you want. You know, slice it up, throw them in some barbecue sauce, whatever, you, whatever, your, whatever oinks your pig, man. All right, everybody, completion of day three. All we have to do is wrap it now. We don't need to show you that. All the German sausages came out, the deer and the antelope, and our summer sausage for both. This is the mahogany, this is the clear. And as you can see on the clear, this is why I like doing the clear, because uh, you can see the jalapenos and the cheese in there, and it aesthetically, man, it just, when you put this out on the table and you're cutting it in front of people, they go, ooh. You know, it's beautiful. They just came out, and this is the German. Same way, miniature little summer sausage. You can see the cheese in there and jalapenos. Finish cooking these off. Throw them in with a couple eggs or whatever you want. These things are so good also. This is gonna be a good video to watch on the uh, preparation, smoking process, and all that for, uh, for wild game. Antelope, deer, a little bit of elk. Appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.